In terms of innovation, I mean, you guys come out with you know dozens of different beers each year. How how do you how do you keep that going? You know, how do you keep the freshness of, of the brand going, and how do you keep innovating within the company while growing? It's what we've always done. Yeah. You know, we wouldn't know any other way. Uh, if you told me, well, you can't come out with any new beers for a year, uh, we were like blow a gasket. Um, all of us, all of the brewers at Sam Adams, that's what we do. You know, we're always trying to figure out how to make our beers better and what really cool beers are there that nobody's ever made before. And so we're constantly, you know, reinventing new beer styles. Because just because somebody's, you know, never aged beer in bourbon barrels before, why not? So we started doing that 20 years ago and now it's become a very common part of craft brewing is, is barrel aged beers. Do you have um, a strategy for how you pick the, the different types of beers that you're going to work on and then release? Or, or is it just kind of, you know, people in the lab just You know, it's around? a little bit of both. Yeah. You really can't put fences around creativity. Right. You do have to have good people and give them the time and the resources to, you know, get their creative juices flowing. Uh, so in Boston, you know, we have a nano brewery uh, where we do uh, 10 gallon batches. We can do three of them a day. Uh, so, you know, during the course of a year, we could do 700, 800 unique beers. So you got to have the tools to do it and then the creativity and the motivation to want to. How has Boston Lager changed over the years? Um, it is the exact same recipe, yeah. the exact same ingredients, the exact same brewing process, but there are still ways to just uh, go to higher and higher standards. You know, I was talking about the hops. Um, we make Boston Lager with uh, what are called noble hops. They're the heirloom hops of, of Germany's lager brewing tradition. And just like uh, grapes, they have terroir issues. They can only be grown sure. in a little area of the world north uh, of Munich. Um, and they've been grown there for centuries. But as we started working with them and the hop growers, we discovered they're harvesting them about a week too early. They were harvesting them basically on the visual attributes. Right. Um, and they uh, hit their visual peak about a week before they hit their flavor peak. So they were harvesting like a beauty contest. And I went to the hop growers, I don't care what they look like. I only care how they smell and taste. And if you leave them on the vines an extra week, we'll pay you more money. And don't worry, we'll buy them even though they're not pretty. We want the best flavor we can get. And yeah. they, that was a shock to them. So it's those kinds of things that improve a great product and you can't ever stop. But those guys have been doing that for thousands of years, am I wrong? Yeah. Yeah. So and you're telling these German, you know, hop growers <laughs> that they've been doing it wrong for a thousand years. I know. Years, it was a shock. Yeah. Um, and it took, you know, it's taken a few years to re-educate them and to convince the German. There's a hop research institute there. We actually did our studies wow. with them. We actually had proof of it from gas chromatographs. You could see uh, the peaks of the key compounds going up. Uh, day after day as you left them on the field. So, yeah, but we're Americans, you know? <laughs> we build on tradition. Just because they've been doing it for right. a thousand years, like, well, we've been doing this for a thousand years, it has yeah. to be right. And I'm thinking, a thousand years and you haven't thought of anything better? Come on, let's go.